Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. Hope everybody's having a great start to the work week out there. If you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below because you get all of that here on this channel. It is absolutely free to do. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are new here and press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. So getting into today's weather forecast, we're going to start here with the 500 millibar height anomaly map because this does show where the cool weather is and you can see it's out across the west and that's correlated here by the blue colors the reds and the oranges off to the east across southeastern Canada and the eastern two-thirds of the United States are building heights and what that usually implies is warmer than normal temperatures and that is what we do see starting off this week but changes are coming as soon as later this week we're gonna start to see more ridging building across portions of the Aleutian Islands and into western Canada, that's going to be sending temperatures well above normal out west. Meanwhile, the cool air will be on the move. It's going to be shifting east here across portions of southern Canada and into the middle of the country later this week and really start to cool off our temperatures across the eastern two-thirds of the country as we especially get into this upcoming weekend. So let's look at the high temperatures today. It's going to be another anomalously warm day across the middle of the country. We're talking about widespread highs into the 80s, even some 90s down here from the plains, the mid-Missouri Valley, all the way down here toward the Gulf Coast. We're into the low 90s there in Dallas, 87 in Tulsa and Oklahoma City, and we're at 86 in Kansas City, 87 up here into Des Moines this afternoon. So another borderline air conditioner type of day across these areas as we get into this afternoon. But look out west, where we have the cooler temperatures, we have more active weather. We have some precipitation out west here, and we're seeing those cloud covers starting to linger across portions of the Pacific Northwest, and that's holding our temperatures down into the 40s and the 50s out west here. But watch, with the progression of that cold front and that active weather, we're going to start to see a transition to more fall-like temperatures and temperatures we're normally used to seeing this time of year as we get toward the middle of the week. This is on Wednesday, October 4th. More more of those 70s and 80s lingering across the eastern two-thirds, but you see the starting signs of that cool down. The Dakotas, northern Minnesota, down into western Nebraska, we're down into the low and mid-60s for highs as we get into Wednesday, and a more pronounced cool down across the north central states as we get into late this week and the end of the work week on Friday, October 6th. More of these highs will be into the 40s and 50s across portions of the north central United States. We will be mild to the south, but 80 degrees in Dallas will definitely take it after what was a very long and hot summer out there, and definitely you guys deserve it down into the Texas region for sure. Looking ahead to Saturday morning, these are your overnight lows expected Friday night to Saturday Saturday morning, yes, we could be waking up to temperatures near freezing, a hard freeze, or even a widespread frost is pretty likely up here, I think, across the northern plains into the northern Rockies. And just to show you that, here is my frost and freeze confidence from Friday, October 6th into Saturday morning on October 7th, this upcoming weekend. And anywhere in the very light blue here, you have essentially up to a 40% chance of seeing a frost or freeze. And anywhere in the medium shaded blue color, you have essentially a 40 to a 70% chance of seeing those frost and freeze conditions and that could be quite widespread in this region across the western Dakotas, western Nebraska getting into eastern Montana and much of Wyoming. But we also have to talk about some active weather. So we have that cold front. That's going to be the focal point for the change in our air masses going from the warmer temperatures to the cooler temperatures and normally when you see that during the fall months, that spells out the chance for some severe weather. So a second season of severe weather is underway here and that cold front is going to be splicing its way through the central plains and into the southern plains as we go into today 
And as such, we have a marginal risk of severe weather in the dark green shaded color from the Dakotas all the way down here toward portions of West Texas. And in the yellow shaded color, that's a level two out of five on the scale. That is a slight risk of severe weather this afternoon and evening. And just to zoom it in to show you some cities in the higher relative risk of severe weather, the Dalhart region down here toward portions of Hobbs, New Mexico, the Clovis region, Roswell, and even the Carlsbad region could start to see more of that severe weather in scattered fashion and coverage as we go in toward later on today. So let's time this out for you this afternoon. You start to see these uh, scattered to more numerous supercells starting to develop here across the Rockies. This is from Wyoming down through Colorado into New Mexico and West Texas here at first this afternoon. But then some more of this activity will be lifting up into the western Dakotas, western Nebraska here. And then all the way south through the Texas Panhandle and into West Texas as we go into tonight with scattered severe weather events along the way. All modes of severe weather are in play, including the potential for tornadoes. So definitely want to make sure you have all of your weather radios working for later on today across the middle of the country to get those watches and warnings out there. Then as we fast forward into your Tuesday on October 3rd, that cold front's going to continue to progress further off to the east here. That's going to be intercepting that warm, moist, and unstable air from the Gulf of Mexico, and that's where we're going to see the lift along the cold front. We're lifting up all of that instability into the atmosphere and causing some thunderstorms. And we have a more widespread day for severe weather potentially from Minnesota all the way down through Texas again, especially in this yellow shaded color from Nebraska down through portions of west central Kansas, western Oklahoma into west Texas, including parts of the eastern Texas panhandle as we go into Tuesday, October 3rd. And this does have a little bit more of a significant risk for hail. Anywhere you see these hatched marks in the black shaded colors, those are actually hailstones that could be in excess of two inches in diameter. That's hen egg size or larger across this region, and that extends from south central Nebraska through western Kansas into parts of western Oklahoma, including parts of the Oklahoma panhandle and the eastern Texas panhandle across this region on Tuesday. So timing out Tuesday morning, we see some lingering activity from your Monday night time frame here tonight into your Tuesday morning. This will start to fade away, just the remnants, maybe some showers and some isolated thunderstorms out there. The severe weather coverage will be exceptionally low at this point. But as we go into Tuesday afternoon, the peak daytime heating, as we well know, will start to see some showers and thunderstorms really start to percolate here across the middle of the country. Supercells will be embedded, so some tornadoes may be possible as we go into Tuesday afternoon. And then we have a big line, a squall line of showers and storms from the eastern Dakotas, western Minnesota, all the way down through at least northwestern Oklahoma here, if not maybe a little bit further to the south as we go into Tuesday evening and into the overnight hours. So this will start to transition more to a damaging wind and heavy rainfall event across the middle of the country during that time frame. Then as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, the cold front's going to start to slow down a little bit, especially across Texas Hill Country into the lower Mississippi Valley. That's going to be stalling out a little bit and slowing down. So more opportunities for some beneficial rains down here. You know, we have a lot of drought going on. We're also going to be seeing some rain up there into the Great Lakes region, the Western Ohio Valley and po uh, portions of the Missouri Valley as well. Wednesday into Thursday. And then again, that cold front's going to be slowing down. So the Rio Grande Valley will have a couple of days of rainfall Wednesday into Thursday. And then again, Thursday into Friday across this region, helping out the drought concerns and look at all the rainfall that is on the way folks this is your total rainfall accumulation in inches now through the end of the week on friday october 6th you can see the heaviest rains will be down here across Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and much of central and southern Texas, including the Rio Grande Valley here. And zooming it in to show you the potential the potential amounts here, yeah, the Tulsa region up near 2 inches, the Oklahoma City area near 2 inches, Dallas-Fort Worth about 2 to 3 inches for you folks there, the Waco region, and then down towards San Antonio, we also could be seeing some 2 to 3 inch rainfall amounts now through your Friday time frame. So definitely the beneficial rains that we been looking for down across the southern plains are on the way and this could be leading to some flash flooding concerns just because we have a dry ground and it's ready to soak up the moisture 
If all of this comes down at a sh very fast clip and a fast rate, this could lead to some flooding concerns regardless of the dry ground. And I think that is highest on Wednesday into Thursday, where we do have a widespread marginal to slight risk of flash flooding potential, especially from southeast Oklahoma into north central Texas, having to be watching out from this across the Oklahoma City metro area, Tulsa, Ardmore, down there toward Denton, and even the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, back toward Abilene, San Antonio, just some areas to keep an eye on that as we go Wednesday into Thursday. Looking at the long range pattern a week from today, Monday to October 9th through the following weekend on Sunday, October 15th, getting toward the middle of the month. We're going to push that cold uh, push of air further off to the east, and we're going to replace that with more above normal temperatures. Now, I don't think it's going to be as warm as what we just got over with with the 80s and 90s, but I do certainly think by towards the second and third week there in October, we're going to start to warm up again above normal, and that could mean more 60s and 70s during that time, which would be anomalously warm for the middle of October. It will be dry, though, underneath that ridge, so as that ridge comes back across the middle of the country. The Great Lakes region into the Midwest will probably be the driest during that period with more wet weather down here from Texas here, especially coastal Texas through the Gulf Coast toward Florida and then especially up into the Pacific Northwest from that Monday, October 9th through the Sunday, October 15th time frame, it's going to be rather wet as well with more troughs coming in, more storm systems from the Aleutian Islands down into Washington State here, Oregon, and even into parts of the Sacramento Valley into California as well. Taking you out to the tropics, we are keeping an eye on Tropical Storm Felipe. We've been keeping an eye on this system for quite some time now, and you can see it down here in the North Atlantic Ocean, very close to the Leeward Islands here as of this morning and you can see this is going to remain at tropical storm status all the way through at least midweek on Wednesday before it starts to turn up and away from the North American region and east of the Bermuda Islands as a hurricane as we get into that Thursday and Friday time frame. So keeping an eye on this storm. Today we may start to see some impacts continuing across the Leeward Islands. We'll keep an eye there on Puerto Rico as well, but it looks pretty good for you folks. This is going to miss you off to the north and east, I think, of Puerto Rico. And then by the middle of the week on Wednesday, October 4th, this is going to be strengthening. Remember, these water temperatures are well above normal still across the northwest Atlantic. So this is going to have plenty of fuel to add to the fire here across portions of the Northwest Atlantic and as it starts to turn away from Bermuda and away from North America here it's really going to strengthen this model actually has it down on Friday October 6 to a 948 millibar low which would place it into more of that category 2 possibly closing in on category 3 strength hurricane out here over the open waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Looking at the wave heights, though, we will at least have some indirect impacts to Bermuda here. So Bermuda, you're still going to be seeing some impacts from the system and likely with some rip currents, some rough surf, and some higher waves out there, especially Thursday night and into Friday morning with the peak of that. You can see with the yellows here, you're talking about 10 to maybe 15-foot waves, especially on the eastern side of the islands there of Bermuda. So we're going to be keeping an eye on our friends in Bermuda to for those higher waves out there but just in general with the tropical season continuing through October it does look busy continuing through the middle of the month and even into that third week of October from October 11th through the 17th we are going to be keeping an eye more on the western Caribbean and even the Yucatan region down here toward the southern Gulf as we go deeper into October and also keeping an eye on our friends out here in the eastern Pacific Ocean a couple of systems could start to brew up over the next several days as well as we get deeper into October for you guys in the eastern Pacific Ocean as well if you haven't seen my winter forecast for 2023 and 24 make sure to hit the link for that video down below this video lots of great information on what to expect for the winter forecast coming up this year all across North America and especially the lower 48 here in the United States. Make sure to leave any comments, questions, concerns that you do have about the upcoming winter here. I will answer everybody's questions on that video. And also leave a like if you liked it as well. I do appreciate it. Leave a like on today's video. Share this video with friends, family, on the, and on social media, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. I do appreciate 
everybody helping me out and getting the word out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you were new here so you can stay up to date on all of these detailed weather breakdowns across North America and the tropics. Moving forward, I definitely do appreciate it, and I hope everybody has a great rest of their Monday out there.